Welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today is Kathy Louise Broda, yoga teacher and owner of Yoga Studio Purple Yoga Hawaii. Today, we're going to talk about finding your core. So let's get into it. How can finding your core help you with back pain, Kathy? Um, the, one of the main things when people have back pain is they discover that they don't have strong abdominals. So part of finding our core is it's our abdominal, um, the layers of abdominal wall, kind of the inside, middle and outside layers. So there's three layers of abdominals, but it's also finding pelvic floor muscles. So the two in yoga, when we do our pelvic floor muscles and then abdominal uh, muscles, these areas we call mula bandha, is, which is our root lock or our kegels or pelvic floor muscles. And then we have our udiana, which is our abdominal lock or abdominal um, engagement. Those two things coming together pull towards your spine and that helps, that helps to stabilize your sacrum, your lower back. So most people, when they are coming to yoga, if they have any kind of lower back pain, I'm always talking about thinking navel to spine. If we can look at the um, diagram that we have, um, we can kind of see what's going on with the abdominals. So um, on the diagram, you'll see the front, we have, uh, you'll see the words navel to spine. So literally thinking if you pull your navel back towards your spine, that's just the beginning of uh, finding your core. And then for the pelvic floor Kegels muscles, we have the front, which is the urethra, urethra middle, which is the perineum and back muscles, which are the anus. And literally thinking from your uh, pubic bone to your tailbone of literally thinking of everything lifting up. So finding that navel back to spine and then pelvic floor lifting, that helps to find that kind of ball of energy on the inside of your tummy, which again, stabilizes the sacrum in the lower back. So if someone is not using their, their pelvic floor muscles and their mula bandha, is it more likely that they'll be injured? Is it very likely they'll be injured? Like, can people just go around not using them and not get injured because they're flexible? Um, yes, I think that generally in yoga, it's like if you're, if you're flexible, you can practice without doing bandhas, but what happens is that if you overdo something or you go too deeply into a posture and then maybe you're pushing yourself into it and if you're not supporting the back, you'll get sometimes a little twinge where the sacroiliac joint um, meets, um, it's, like a, it's like a V-shaped where your spine kind of drops into your lower back and you've got this, the sacroiliac joint. And so sometimes there's little tiny movements in the joint and if it's not, say if you're going into a deep forward bend and then you push yourself a little bit more, you might just feel a little zing or a little like, ooh, it's like a little, um, it's kind of sometimes even people feel like a hot, hot sensation. Mm -hmm. That usually means that you've gone a little bit too far. And then what happens is that um, over time, if you, keep, if you keep going into that without using your abdominal or your Kegels uh, muscles, then it just gets more and more angry. And then um, that's why some people will come into yoga and they'll leave and their lower back hurts. And you're like, oh, yoga is not very good because my back hurts. Mm -hmm. And I, if, that, if that's the case, I always talk about it. It's like, well, we need to find that core. And for a beginner person, generally, I'm just saying, let's just think navel to spine because for a lot of people, they don't understand the pelvic floor muscles. And it can be, um, some people can think, well, why do I need to do that? Mm -hmm. So usually I'll just say, just think navel to spine, and then they understand it's that health and safety, like bend your knees, use your core. We hear all these things every day, um, and then, but then it's actually putting it into practice in, a, in either in a yoga class or mm -hmm. just day-to-day -day living, getting in and out of your car, um, lifting up grocery bags, really anything that we do, um, finding your core will really help with the lower back. So if you already have lower back problems, is this something that people can incorporate into their daily life already? Yes, don't do yes, already. yeah. And I think that um, simply thinking, thinking kind of tall and long in the waist, thinking that navel to spine, that's kind of the beginning of um, finding some relief. Uh, 
it's kind of ironically that sometimes lower back pain is because the body is in kind of a, a hunched over position. Either you're sitting, like you're sitting at your computer really rounded, or sometimes when I sit in my car, I can feel the bucket seat nature of the car seat. Yeah. So um, doing something like putting, making sure you're sitting in an upright chair or in my car, some cars have the fancy that, you know, you can kind of pump up the lower back area or yeah, put a, um, put a pillow, something in your lower back to support the back. Cause if you're in that rounded kind of C curve position, what can tend to happen is that the lower back will start to ache. Yeah. So that would be a good time to actually pull in your mula bunda and your, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Because I mean, I've, feel like whenever I go on long car trip, I always have incapacity. Definitely. Back pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I find that sometimes during the, um, you know, I take my daughters to school in the morning, some mornings, and mm -hmm. we take one daughter early and then I come home and I take my other daughter. And then by the second car ride home, mm -hmm. I'm like, my back already hurts. And I've probably just been sitting and kind of slunched over driving and mm -hmm. I'm not sitting up tall. So the more tall you feel internally, Mm -hmm. um, the more your abdominal muscles will connect to your spine, but then there's also the psoas muscle, but that's a whole other set of muscles that, um, kind of hard to describe. And if we just think navel to spine, sit up tall, get something to support your back, um, that should help to begin to, um, relieve the lower back. Yeah. Um, how about, uh, you, why don't you show us the video right now and show yeah. us how people can incorporate the Mula Bandha and how it sort of works or yeah. the, just your so general. in this video i'm in a forward bend and you can see my tummy is really kind of falling down so this would be an example of a very big belly breath and i'm not engaging my core at all i'm really just i'm pulling with my arms but i'm really just letting everything hang out so there's that kind of hanging out and i'll come up to stand you can see it's just kind of falling the second version, um, I'm going in and I'm thinking, breathe into my rib cage. You can see all of a sudden the tummy kind of sucks up and in. So now I'm using my core so I can pull a little bit more and I know that I'm gonna be safe if I am uh, pulling into a forward bend. And it's kind of uh, counterintuitive, but when I inhale, I can feel my navel like right here, it sucks up and in. I'm supporting my lower back and then I stand up. So I was just thinking another thing that um, can be helpful as well as navel to spine is like, how do I breathe? And I always tell people it's like breathing into the rib cage that if you breathe, a belly breath is a very low breath, um, kind of down in your tummy. If you're pulling your navel to your spine and you breathe into your rib cage, the rib cage expansion helps to actually lift the pelvic floor and helps to lift the um, abdominals as well. So if you just think of it as like a pressure um, that if I, if I open up my, I open up my rib cage at the top, then naturally there's this pull up from the bottom. So it's almost like you don't even have to think about it. Just think I'm going to expand my rib cage and there's got, you get that natural kind of uh, suction on the inside of the body where the pelvic floor lifts. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of two things but we're not used to breathing into our rib cage. A lot of people don't breathe into their rib cage. Yeah. A lot of people breathe just into this part of their chest. So then it's just mm -hmm. simply doing something like holding your ribs and then take a deep breath into your fingers. I talk about breathing into the back, kind of breathing into your kidneys. You can't really breathe into your kidneys, but you can think about breathing into the back of the body and that helps a lot. So kind of connecting the breath, uh, the inhalation with, that expansion of the upper part of the body and then the exhalation of really pulling the navel back in towards the spine. Yeah. So how about the Mula Bandha specifically? Cause you know, there's two things, I guess you didn't um, explain it to them, but you know, there's the Uddiyana and then there's Mula Bandha. So we've been talking about the Uddiyana. With Uddiyana the, Bandha, yeah. Yeah, yes. the so, navel to the spine, but um, how about the Mula Bandha and how can so that- Mula Bandha, um, Mula Bandha, if we can quick look at the diagram again, and then we can see what's going on with the diagram. Um, so you can see, okay, Mula Bandha, if you, everybody knows, you kind of, everybody kind of knows where the pubic bone is just below the navel. Um, it's where the hip bones connect. And then the tailbone is your, uh, the base of your spine. So between your pubic bone and your tailbone, we have a whole set of muscles. 
they're all interconnected and you can't disconnect them. So if you're doing one thing, other things are probably going along for the ride. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, like, and I, I kind of joked recently a couple, a couple of years ago and I taught this workshop, um, I said, everybody's doing the Mula Bunda, the Kegels right now. If we weren't doing them, it would be a complete mess. Or basically <laughs> you can, everybody can hold everything in without even thinking about it. And the hold in, for example, is if your bladder is full and you really need to go to the bathroom, you basically, we know how to, or just body knows how to hold the very, like where the urethra, where the exit, where the urine comes out, we know how to hold that. And then as soon as you sit down on the toilet, you're like, oh, you can let go. The urine comes out and your bladder's empty. So, and then the back muscles would be the same thing if, you're, if you have a bowel movement and you're holding, 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 and then you release, the bowel movement comes out and all of a sudden you're empty. So it's really paying attention to those muscles, the front muscles and the back muscles. And then middle muscles um, can be a little bit more elusive. But if you just think about connecting the back muscles and the front muscles, and then, and then just thinking about everything kind of rising up towards the ceiling, um, that then helps to find the Kegel muscles or your uh, uh, pelvic floor muscles. And for men and women, the perineum is, is the same. For women, we have um, a vagina. So the perineum is actual, uh, actually, um, I don't know if it's thinner and I anatomically, I don't know exactly like if there's a huge difference. Um, all I know is that for women, we have a slightly different sensation when we lift the middle muscles because we have the ability to actually lift from the outside all the way up towards mm -hmm. the cervix. And that's just all of these, all these things I'm talking about are just, I'm, I'm just, ex I've experienced from practicing yoga and then from having children. Um, so I just, it's really just the experience of finding, losing the muscles and refinding them that has helped me to understand um, our pelvic floor. You mm -hmm. don't need to have kids in order to find your pelvic floor. You use it every day, sitting in your car, going to the bathroom, you know, any time of the day, our Kegels, our pelvic floor muscles are engaged. So it's really just paying attention to it next time you have to go to the bathroom, just pay attention and be like, oh, those are the front muscles. Oh, those are the back muscles. And then those connect to the abdominal muscles. Um, and that helps to kind of find this ball of energy at the center, just below our navel. There's kind of this ball of energy where the um, Udiana, your abdominal muscles, and then the Kegel muscles where they kind of connect. Mm -hmm. So in yoga, this is where we talk about our fire, um, where our Agni is, our fire is. Mm -hmm. That's our core. Yeah. So how can, I mean, for people who have given birth or people who are pregnant, you help people because you teach the pregnancy class in yeah. the studio and you help people kind of find their pelvic floor muscles so they can help themselves through their pregnancy and everything. And can you yeah. talk more about that? So in, in my pregnancy class, um, basically the very first thing we do is we do our Kegels. Um, or pelvic floor muscle exercises. And I just take women through a visualization of thinking about front, middle, and back, um, identifying, thinking about where your pubic bone is, where your tailbone is. And just by talking about it, every single time I teach the class, especially if I have a new person, I'll actually, I'll uh, be very specific about the areas. Otherwise, I'll just say front, middle, and back. Mm -hmm. And um, we always do it at the beginning of class, because by the end of class, you're usually tired. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of hard to find the muscles. So um, it's really just kind of saying the information and women hear it. And then if you keep hearing it, and especially towards the end of a pregnancy where your tummy is getting big, baby's big, there's wow. a moment where around 37, 38 weeks where the baby drops down. And literally the baby kind of crawls up underneath your rib cage and all of a sudden it drops and it's literally dropping into your pelvic bowl. And you all of a sudden feel your pelvic floor just really dropping out. It's really uncomfortable. Um, it's not very pleasant. And I'm always trying to tell women, it's like find the muscles before that happens. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't do any Kegels or you don't kind of identify your pelvic floor before you have a baby and regardless of vaginal or C-section delivery, after you have a baby, it's really hard to refine those muscles. So, I mean, I'm, I tell women and guys as well, it's like, you wouldn't 
you wouldn't say, I'm going to run a marathon, sign up for the marathon and never do any training. Right. I know a couple of people, I know a couple of people who have done that <laughs> and they're kind of crazy, but you wouldn't do that. Normally you would think I'm going to run a marathon. I need to start building up my stamina. I need to start building up my miles, you know? So for me, we have this opportunity in pregnancy to actually do the Kegel exercises. We also do what I call rock the baby, which is letting your abdominal muscles go and pulling your abdominal muscles in. So we do those two exercises before we get up and actually start doing asanas. And, um, and then once a woman has a baby, if they come into the mom and baby class, it's pretty much the same information. I'm talking about that navel to spine. I'm talking about lifting up in the Kegels or lifting up pelvic, pelvic floor muscles. So it's just a, a reinforcement of this event has happened. We need to refine this. This can be true also for anybody who has any kind of abdominal surgery, um, hernias, um, for women, if they have any um, like uterine issues, if some women have hysterectomies, uh, kind of there's so many issues that as prolapse, yeah, prolapse, prolapse yeah. is a whole mm -hmm. prolapse. Um, it's a little bit more difficult maybe, but yeah, yeah. that's like, mm -hmm. and prolapse it's late by then you know uterus yeah the uterus and also the bladder prolapsing those i've had i've, I've known in some older women kind of in their 70s 80s who's that that's happened to mm -hmm. um i don't know if it's related to not being strong or whether it's just something that all of a sudden happens oh, okay. but when that situation yeah they end up having you have, to have surgery and you kind of they they put a yeah. net and they kind of sew it up into mm -hmm. i'm not sure where to, yeah. to keep it supported yeah um i'll let you know if that ever happens to me <laughs> oh no <laughs> I, like, I, don't like, I don't think so i don't think so <laughs> no i feel like those of us that do yoga it's like we're kind of walking experiments to see what happens as we get older mm -hmm. and <laughs> i feel like having had i have three kids and having had uh, i have uh, a, i had a singleton and i had twins so having had kids i feel like i've kind of proven something because my body is put back together. It's not what it was before I had kids, but it's, I have, I have strength. I have, um, I feel my pelvic floor is strong. I feel my abdominals are strong. I had a C-section with the twins. So there's so many experiences that I've had. And as I said, that everything that I teach and everything that I talk about comes from experience. Mm -hmm. And so if somebody has a question, then it's like, we'll ask that question and then we'll try and figure out how we can help you to make things better or help things to heal um, yeah. with low, any kind of lower back pain or abdominal pain or rib cage, you know, whatever it is, um, you know, we try and help, but going at it from that core, because the core is so mm -hmm. important just generally in everything, yeah. you know, from, from um, any kind of sports to mm -hmm. aging, to um, any kind of injuries, Balance, it usually yeah. goes back to if you can find your core, if you can be strong in your center, then other things kind of can go back to some sort of equilibrium. Yeah, I mean, as you age, it's very important to have a good, strong core for balance. You know, every single time you fall, you might take right. a hard fall or you could take an right. easy fall. And, right. Um, right. and then also just, you know, as people get older, a lot of people have incontinence, stress incontinence. So right. if you already have those muscles and you know how to use them. Right. That will help you yes. Or you can like, you can catch yourself. Um, I have one woman, um, you know, I've had women who come to class and when you're pregnant, the uh, baby is pretty much sitting right on top of the bladder. So I've got one woman right now who her baby is just sitting right on top of the bladder. So she has to go to the bathroom a lot. So I know she's using her Kegels but it, there's just that feeling of like, I need to go. So she goes and then she comes back to class. And, but she was saying that it's been like this from the beginning. So it's so important to keep finding those muscles so that you can help yourself and you can hold anything that's in your bladder for as long as you can until you can get to a bathroom, you know? So yeah, it is um, for, you know, for everybody, really yeah. important muscles. Yeah. Are there any exercises like for beginners that you would recommend? people who haven't maybe tried yoga yet that they could do to sort of start i mean besides like the breathing exercises start finding their core for back pain if they're uh, experiencing back pain really just very simply just sit up taller or stand up taller 
you know, we often, as I said, we often find ourselves really, and I, so many of us are, you know, at home on our computers and we're all rounded over and kind of hunched over. Um, as soon as you're in that position, more than likely the abdominals are just kind of falling out and you're just hanging out. So even be aware of um, when I'm in my car, be aware of how you're driving that, um, you know, it's like try and find a position where you can actually sit up. Uh, or the other thing you can also do is I have this in the pregnancy class I talk about. Um, and it was something that a woman said that she did was that every time she either went to a stoplight or a stop sign, anytime she stopped the car, she would pull, she would pull her abdominal muscles in and pull up in her kegels just to feel it. Um, so that's because that's another thing is like, you can try and work the muscles. Um, but if you do too much, everything gets numb. You just can't feel what you're trying to do. So it's better, and this is for guys as well. It's better to do a little bit, a couple times a day, say three times a day, rather than try and do a hundred lifts. Mm -hmm. um, because at a point, the muscles just get tired and then you'll just kind of, you feel numb and you can't really feel what you're doing. And then sometimes it becomes counterproductive, especially with the abdominal muscles. Because yeah. we're not trying to do, it's, a, it's different from doing like crunches, like um, sit-up crunches. Mm -hmm. It's actually, it's, Actually, if we can show the second video of me in downward facing dog, because then you can see that kind of scoop. So um, here in this, I'm gonna do one breath. I think, there we go. So this is a belly breath where my tummy's just falling down. And I think I do a second one. So again, there's the inhale. So you can mm -hmm. see I'm not using my core. There's no abdominal muscles. There's no pelvic floor muscles. Now watch on this next one, I'm breathing into my rib cage, I'm breathing into my back, I'm breathing into my bra strap. And then as I exhale, I'm pulling my rib cage in. And then again, so um, finding, thanks for the video, finding a tall spine, making sure you're not rounded. So tall spine, and then just doing some, like holding your rib cage. It's like, can you hold your rib cage and can you breathe into your rib cage? Mm -hmm. And if you find yourself all of a sudden kind of hunched over and your head's in front of your shoulders, just think I'm gonna sit up tall, super tall, think shoulder blades back and down behind me, pull my abdominal muscles in, try and find some Kegel muscles and take a deep breath. It's as simple as that, but it's like when we're stressed out or we're in the middle of a job or middle of the day, it's usually the last thing we're thinking about, mm -hmm. you know, but just doing something simple like that. If you do it enough, it starts to kind of, um, your body just kind of knows as soon as you stand up, those things will start to happen without you have to kind of having to consciously think about it. Mm -hmm. So for men, because they don't have like a vagina, like how do they find like the middle part of their, you know, they have the anus, they have the front part, the urethra. How do they find the middle? Right. Like, it's pull? the same. It's the same area. It's not as dramatic because they don't have anything to suck up and into. Right. Yeah. But it's still the same feeling or it's, it's not the same feeling. It's the same, um, same area. Mm -hmm. And so think about the area. And then pull yeah. Out. Just think about the area. Just think about that area of, of finding the, and then, so the other thing is like, if you can find the front muscles and the back muscles and you can find that lift, mm -hmm. more than likely middle, middle is coming along for the ride. I always say that. It's like if you're doing one thing, something else is coming along for a ride mm -hmm. because you can't disconnect the area. If you, if you look at an, so that's the other thing. If you look at an anatomy book, like look at the pelvic floor muscles and they basically, it's quite beautiful when you look at the shapes that they make, but mm -hmm. you'll see that it's all interconnected. It's, it, it's not, it can't be disconnected. So you do one, the other one's going to be engaged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Kathy, how can people find you? I mean, Kathy's been teaching for more than 30 years. She practices Ashtanga herself and um, she's a great teacher. She's my yoga teacher. So how can people find you if they want to get in touch with you? If they want to go to class, how can people find you? Best place to find us is on our website, which is purpleyoga.com. There we go. There it is. Purpleyoga.com. Um, on here, we've got our schedule. Uh, it's got the price listing. Um, it has the kinds of classes that we teach. 
We have um, our main teaching is a Mysore self practice of Ashtanga Yoga, which is um, which is the class that Grace comes to. Sometimes Grace is also coming to my lead class, which is on Saturdays. And then I do a prenatal postnatal program that we have on Sundays. Um, and we're in three different locations. So it's probably best if you look at the website and you'll see all the different places that we're at and then contact us. You can either call us or um, email us. Uh, we're also on Instagram at Purple Yoga Hawaii and Facebook, same Purple Yoga Hawaii. Um, so just to, yeah, contact us via that and uh, ask any questions if you have any questions about what we do. Yeah, yeah um, let me see if anybody, I guess, um, is there anything else that you want to say before we close up about um, core? You're like core. Use your core. <laughs> it's so important. I know. It's so important. Oh, another thing I want to say real quickly is that um, it was funny this morning, Grace, when you were practicing and when you came <laughs> in, I started getting really nervous. And when I, when I get nervous, my back hurts. Mm, so for me, happens. my back is like my barometer of stress. So mm -hmm. when I'm slightly stressed or I'm slightly nervous, my back will start to wobble. My, my, mm -hmm. literally my sacrum, I can feel my sacrum. I get these little kind of zingy, hot feeling. I'm like, oh no. So I was like the whole time today, I was like, you pull in your core. This is what you're talking <laughs> about. You don't want to get <laughs> and not be able to walk and move. So I'm doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. So you might find that if you have stress, that your lower back takes that stress or all yeah. of a sudden you your abdominal muscles like you get a shock and your abdominal muscles just let go and you feel your back you're like oh first thing do take a breath and then pull your navel back in towards your spine that's like the best advice that i can make think tall <laughs> think tall and pull everything in so i was this morning i was i was doing <laughs> as i was teaching <laughs> Thank you so much. So um, we're you. out of time and we have to wrap it up, but um, okay. Grace O'Neill, this is Healthy Planet on Think Tech live streaming network series. We've been talking with Kathy Lewis Broda of Purple Yoga about finding your core. Thanks to all of you for being here. And thanks to Max, our broadcast engineer and the rest of the crew at Think Tech for hosting our show. And thanks to you, our listeners for listening. I'll see you on March 3rd for more of Healthy Planet on Think Tech, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet. Our next show features guest Darlene Lou McDowell, butterfly rancher and owner of Sharing the Butterfly Experience and expert in raising monarch butterflies. We will be talking about monarch butterflies. If you have ideas for the show, please contact me at healthyplanetthinktech at gmail.com. Check out my website at graceandhawaii.com for more information on my projects, including future show guests. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>